today I want to do this video broadcast. I'm going to start with reading the verse from Galatians 3.26, which says, let me just uh, get it real quickly, it says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all the children of God through faith. We've got to make a distinction. I've titled this message, Heaven's Quilt, but we've got to make the distinction of what he's saying. Some people take this verse out of context and say that every human being is a child of God, which God created every single human being made in his image. But, you know, through faith in Jesus Christ, we can become the true children of God. If we turn away from our sins and believe the gospel and turn to Jesus Christ, we can all be included into God's family through faith in Jesus Christ. That's what it's talking about. It says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. And, <clears throat> and you know, uh, there is a distinction, though. You know, if we take a look at uh, 1 Peter, it talks about the people of God. Uh, as being a holy race, a chosen people, a kingdom of priests. Let's take a look at that passage, and let's go over what it has to talk about. We'll go to First Peter. Uh, and Peter is talking about how through faith in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter who we are or where we're from or what country or race or nationality we are. If we turn to Christ by faith, we become the believers, the children of God. One time Jesus was... Uh, was questioned, you know, he's, somebody in the crowd said, your mother and brothers are here to see you. And Jesus said, who are my mother and brothers and sisters and family? Those who do the will of God are my mother's brothers, sisters, and family. Yet Jesus is saying, if you do the will of God, if you commit to doing the will of God, you are family to me. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And so that's one of the distinctions we've got to make is that through Christ, through turning from our sins to loving him and living for him, we can become part of God's family. And that's what, uh, I'm going to read this passage from 1 Peter. It says, but you are a chosen people. Some translations say you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praise of of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful life. Once you were not the people of God, but now you have become the people of God. Once you have not had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And back then, before Jesus Christ died on the cross, there was a distinction. There was two distinct people groups. There were those who were called Jews, Israelites, and those who were called Gentiles. And Gentiles basically meant any other people group that was not of Israel. But, you know, we see the message of Christ brought salvation to the entire world. So it doesn't matter whether you're a native-born Israelite or whether you're from some other country. Jesus Christ made it possible for all of us to be received by God and considered part of the family of God. You know, we hear today people, people try to talk about all sorts of different things. We see people are talking about race, 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 race all the time, and they're, they're focused on race and stuff like that. And, you know, what I want to encourage everybody is to think about it this way, you know. The Bible really gives only two types of people groups, two races of people. We are either the children of God walking by faith and living God's way, or we are, as First John says, anyone who does evil is of the devil. And so, there it, 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 it's not making any distinction between what country you're from, what color you are. If you do evil, if you live life for sin, you are still in the camp of the enemy. You are still a child of the devil. You know, First John talks about all who live in sin are children of the devil. And so, biblically speaking, there are only two types of races, and that is children of God, saved by faith in Jesus Christ, and children of the devil. If we're still dead in our sins and transgressions, living for ourselves and our sinful nature, we are not the people of God, we are the children of the devil. But when we turn to Jesus Christ by faith, and we repent of our sins, and we turn to him, God takes us outside of the enemy's camp and puts us, puts us in his camp. And so the most important thing we got to realize is that, you know, regardless of what we look like externally, man looks on the outward appearance, the Lord looks at the heart. And the Lord is looking for a heart that is totally committed and devoted to him, 
to live and serve him. And that's why God calls us to repent of our sins and turn from our sins and become the children of light. You know, we, we see throughout Scripture it says, it, it talks about it in this way, live as children of the light. Live as people of the light. Live as people who are living in the day. And, you know, Paul said, let us not behave wickedly like those in darkness, but let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Whenever we put aside our sinful ways and we put on Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we choose to live life by his light, walking in the light. As First John says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, purifies us from all unrighteousness. So, what does it say? We have fellowship with one another. That means it doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from. You know, as Christians, we should all have that family bond, regardless of what, what color, what country, what, what language we have. There is something about being a born-again Christian where you just feel like you can connect with just anybody, anywhere, who shares that same value, that shares that passion to pursue Christ. You know, I've gotten to talk to the people from all over the world that are born-again Christians, and, you know, there's just something family bond about that. There's just something that makes us, makes us connected together. It's the love of Jesus Christ brings people together. And, you know, well, we see a world that's often torn apart by hatred, dissension, rivalry, uh, the anger. We see a society that's being torn apart by sin, and we're not to take our cues from the world. You know, the world's telling us, well, the solution is this, the solution is that, blah, 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 blah. We need to do this and do that. And, you know, listen, you need to repent of your sins and turn to Jesus Christ so then you can truly see clearly why do you pay attention to the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye, Jesus said, when you fail to pay attention to the log in your own eyes. And when, what Jesus is saying is until we take that log out of our own eyes, we won't be able to see clearly to even come up with a solution for the problems we see in the world or have any room to point a finger at anybody else. Jesus is saying, take that big stick out of your eye so you can actually see clearly. Then maybe you can get to a solution for the problems that you see going on around you. But we got to stop pointing the fingers at everybody else and carefully examine, well, is there something blinding my own eye today? Is there something stuck in my eye that's making it so I can't see clearly? Yeah, we, we, we turn away from our sins and we live the way God wants us to live. We can truly see clearly and we can have a heart of wisdom and discernment and see all this stuff going on around us is really caused by sin. It's not caused by, it's not just one particular type of sin, but every single sin that people are willing to live in and commit are contributing to the problems we have in the world. And Jesus wants us to come out of the world as it says in 2 Corinthians, come out of them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And Jesus is giving a distinct call. Listen, Jesus is basically saying, you, you, I want you to come out of this wicked, depraved, sinful culture you're living in, in. Join my team. Live my life. Live life my way. Come out of that group. They can't figure out what's going on. They're in a mess. Come out of that mess and be separate. When Peter was preaching in the book of Acts, he said, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Could we, could we also just say that very similar to what we could say in our time? Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. If you look around, you turn on the news, we are living in a corrupt, corrupt generation who does not have, that does not have the truth, does not have the light. They are coming up with all sorts of ideas to what their problem is when they fail to realize the problem is in the human heart the sin problem in the human heart. And you know what God, Jesus Christ wants to do is he wants to take away that heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. In Ezekiel it says, I will take away their heart of stone and I will give them a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in them and I will move them to follow my laws. And until we deal with the heart of sinful humanity, we cannot begin to find the solution to the brokenness around us. And that's why we're called to share the gospel. And you know what? You know, just think about it like this. There's a quilt. You make a quilt, you sew all these different colorful fabrics together, and you make this beautiful quilt. It's full of all these variety of colors. You know, one day heaven's going to be filled with people of all different colors and all different cuts of fabric that 
have decided they are going to live their life Jesus Christ's way and live by faith in him. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. When we live life God's way, he's going to populate his new kingdom with every single person who has chosen to live life his way, who loves him, and it has nothing to do with where we're born, what color we are, or what we look like externally. It has to do with the heart. And Jesus is looking for hearts that are fully committed to him. As it says in Second Chronicles, For the eyes of the Lord range to and fro throughout the earth to strengthen the hearts of those who are fully committed to him. And you know what? I see no better cause to promote than preaching and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ because that's humanity's only hope. Until people come to the fact of the matter that there's a sin issue in their heart, that they need to deal with the heart of the matter, they're going to keep fumbling around in the darkness trying to figure out what the heck is going on, what is wrong. And, you know, we can't seek external solutions to internal problems. If you have a really deep infection that's inside your bones, you're going to need something that will actually go to the source of the infection and wipe it out, right? But, you know, if you're just sick and you have a disease inside your body and you're getting all these blistering sores that are caused by that infection, you know, topical creams are not going to get rid of the source of the infection. You can put it on. You can maybe heal up some of those the blisters and the wounds that are popping up under your skin, but until you address the issue, the source of that problem, you're still going to keep having outbreaks. And what Jesus wants to do is he wants to go in and cure us in the inside, our hearts. He wants to heal our wayward hearts and cure our black backsliding, as, as it talks about in Isaiah. You know, when we turn to the Lord, we are powerless to save ourselves. We are powerless to change ourselves. All we got to do is really turn to Christ by faith and say, You're right, Lord. Jesus, you're so right. I am broken beyond repair. Please heal me. I trust in you for the salvation of my soul. And I am willing to repent of my sin. Give me strength to turn from these evil ways of mine and live for you. If I was going to try to describe what it would look like to have a prayer of repentance, I would say we have to first acknowledge that we can't do it on our own. We're too weak to change our ways on our own. You know, we're too weak to just turn our lives around unless we turn to him who has the power to strengthen us to do that. And that's what the gospel is. And, you know, that's why it's so much different than, uh, than just religion, because religion says man to mankind, clean yourself up, get it together, you need to be better, I need to get better, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to improve myself, but the gospel is Jesus Christ's message is you can't fix yourself, you can't improve yourself, all you have to do is turn to me and acknowledge how messed up you are, and I will heal you, turn to me by faith, turn away from your sins and turn to me, and I will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit to enable you to live a different life. And that is the beauty of the gospel. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. We have to just come to the realization that we are hopeless and broken. And then we can turn to the solution of our problems. For the solution for our problems. God bless.